continues in this Q&A. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, children of all ages, welcome to this edition of the Wrestling Q&A series here at the Unlimited YouTube channel, the Facebook group page, and the Unlimited One Twitter page. Uh, this is Q&A 38. I did not get to it last week. I apologize for that. But when finals week rolls on, rolls along, uh, all everything else stops. And the focus becomes finals week. Uh, but I did have a little bit of time to do it, so I'm going to be doing it now. Q&A 38. This is part one of the ECW-themed Q&A. I got a lot of questions, and as a result, I'm going to be splitting up into two parts. So if your question did not get answered in this Q&A video, uh, don't think it won't get answered. It probably will. Just maybe not in this Q&A, maybe in the next Q&A. But this is Q&A 38, ECW-themed. And if you want a question answered in a future Q&A video, go to the description box down below with all the details on how you can submit questions. Very, very simple. So, without any further ado, let's get started with the first batch of questions. We'll start off with Francesco Bruno. Do you think ECW could make a comeback? No. I really don't especially considering uh, the last time WWE reformed ECW, it did not go well, it kind of came across as crappy, and it was less about nostalgia and more about BS. It's pretty much how I view it. That's all I can say about it. Uh, what is the most hardcore match that you have watched in ECW? Uh, that match with Beulah versus um, uh, Bill Alfonso, now, that match was really, really damn good. And even Paul Heyman w himself would advocate for that match because that match was freaking good. Uh, we'll go next with Tyler Harper. Would ECW have worked anywhere but Philadelphia? Probably New York. Uh, it's kind of hard to get those rowdy crowds unless you go to the big cities. So, yeah, Philly obviously worked. Uh, if you went to New York, that would work. And if you went to Chicago, that would work. I'm not really that confident that it would work anywhere else other than those big three cities. Maybe Detroit. Maybe Detroit. But other than the three cities that I named, it's kind of hard to picture. Uh, Paul Heyman, genius, madman, or both? Both. He was a genius in terms of writing, in terms of developing characters. Uh, he was a madman for not wanting to change. That's how I view it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, does Joey Styles calling pay-per-views by himself make him the best play-by-play -play man ever? The best? I wouldn't say the best. If you're saying he's one of the best, I agree. Sometimes he could be a little bit too over the top when he doesn't need to be. But, um, I mean, he's one of the best. I wouldn't call him the best. Uh, let's see if Tyler has quest more questions. Yes, how great was Jerry Lynn? More importantly, how underrated was he? I think he's actually a little bit overrated. I didn't really get his appeal, other than the wrestling ability. I mean, obviously that was there. Other than that, you know, the personality of a candle. It's, honestly, I did, never really liked Jerry Lynn. I still don't. Uh, uh, what else? What else? What else? How great was the Raven Tommy Dreamer feud? Really damn good. One of my all time favorites in ECW. Uh, what other, <clears throat> excuse me, questions does Tyler have? Does he have any? Let's see. I didn't pre, I didn't sort these out, so 
Yeah. Uh, Paul Andrew Biello, do you think ECW should have signed a deal with WWE to com- to combat the encroaching WCW? No. Because the way I look at it is very simple. WWF didn't beat WCW. WCW beat WCW. So I'm sure adding ECW to the equation would have definitely put the nail on the coffin. But WCW beat themselves into submission. No matter what anyone tries to say, that's pretty much how it is. WCW beat themselves. And they cost themselves TV deals and this and that and whatever. It was all WCW's fault. ECW, like I said, it could have played a big role helping the WWE. But in the end, WCW beat themselves. If there wasn't a talent raid by WCW during the 90s, do you think ECW would have done better for itself? I don't think so. It kind of goes back to what I said earlier about Paul Heyman. And I think that in ECW's case, Paul Heyman was ECW's own worst enemy. Because he didn't want to adapt to change. He didn't want to change anything. He wanted to keep the same product, and as a result, he was unable to get the big-time television deals, and he was unable to lock up the talent, and he was unable to get the revenue from it. So, even if there wasn't a talent raid, excuse me, without Paul Heyman changing, without ECW getting that big-time national exposure other than TNN, where... You know, it was kind of blink and you missed it. Other than that, I really don't think that they could have done better for themselves. I really don't think they would have. It's kind of hard to envision. Uh, I'm trying to see if Paul has another question. Again, I did not sort these out pre-Q&A, so I'm just kind of reading off the list whenever I can. Uh... Nope, doesn't have another question. I will go now to Walter Main. Yay. Uh, How important was the night the line, excuse me, how important was the night the line was crossed in the history of wrestling? Uh, It was pretty important. I think that in terms of an ECW standpoint, uh, the more important night was when Shane Douglas threw down the belt. But I will definitely agree with you there. It was definitely important. If ECW had never died, how would it have evolved, and what do you think it would be like today? Probably not alive. And it's sad to think that, but it's the reality. If you still have the same guy on the top, it may negatively affect it, like it did back in the 90s and the early 2000s. <clears throat> Excuse me. Was the legacy of ECW tainted by EV2? No. Why? How? How? How was it tainted by people who still wanted to wrestle? Honestly, how? And... It's not like it's all EV2's fault. Dixie Carter's the one that brought them in, hoping to make some money off of it, and she made money off of it. So how was it really tainted? I I don't understand why. Um, Would the history of ECW have been different if Shane Douglas never threw down the NWA title? I think it would be, because look at where the NWA is now compared to what ECW was back in the late 90s. It was a commodity. ECW was... You know, an, a rising company. And it was the third biggest wrestling promotion in the world. Or, excuse me, in the United States at least. United States. The NWA, meanwhile, went from being a great fed to pretty much being non-existent. So, it would have made a huge difference, especially considering where the NWA is now. How great would the Briscoes have done in an EC, in ECW environment? I think they would have done well. And there's a question later about the Young Bucks, too. Um, do, so I'll answer that now. Uh, you put the Young Bucks in ECW, it's 
like matching vanilla and chocolate. It just works together. You know, you, that's why you get, when you get ice cream, sometimes vanilla and chocolate are in the same thing because they work well together. Well, the Young Bucks and ECW would have worked perfectly together, especially considering, you know, the in-ring action is one thing, but just their attitude in general would work perfectly in ECW, especially with their shoot-style personalities. Uh, Matthew Mullins, who was the greatest ECW world champion in the company's history. Ugh. Hmm. Probably, yeah. I guess this. No, not the Sandman. Um, <laughs> to piss everyone off, <laughs> Ezekiel Jackson. That is my answer. Um, but in all seriousness, greatest ECW champion is probably Shane Douglas. Mullins has another question, does he, baby? I should probably sort these out for the next Q&A, so I'm not making you guys wait, but whatever. You guys can wait for good content. <laughs> Any other ones? Come on. All right, Brian Carr, what do you think about EC3 making the ECF and 3 shirts? He made it. Good for him. TNA still sucks. Kevin Nguyen, on a scale of one to a million, how great was Kelly's expose? Probably about a four. Ryan Klimazuski, how great was the zombie? It wasn't. <laughs> Dylan Rumor, I'm going to ask answer excuse me some of his questions now. Would the Young Bucks fare well in ECW? As I said earlier, yes. Uh... What else? If you were starting the next evolution of ECW, it could take five guys from WWE and NXT and five guys from TNA. Who would you get? Five guys from WWE, NXT. Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, Cesaro. Uh, you got to add some kind of a big guy in there, so maybe Rusev. Um, I'm trying to think of NXT. Uh, maybe Nakamura. TNA, the Hardy Boys would probably work. Um, I think EC3 for his mic skills would probably work. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? If you wanted to add some kind of a big mus uh, muscular power guy, I guess you could put Bobby Lashley in there. Uh, that's all I can think of, honestly. Uh, how awful was One Night Stand 2006? Bad. It's pretty bad. Honestly, it was a one-match show. Or, eh, it's like a match and a half. But this is more about WWE than it was about ECW. Unlike 2005, which the next question is, how amazing was One Night Stand 2005? It was really damn good. Because it was pretty much all about ECW. I mean, yeah, you had that small raid at the end of the show, but it wasn't like the WWE guys were invading the entire show. Meanwhile, one of the matches on One Night Stand 06 was Kurt Angle versus Randy Orton. So, yeah. If it wasn't for blank, ECW wouldn't have made it. Fill in the blank, excluding Paul Heyman. Probably RVD. Yeah, that guy was Mr. ECW. It's not even a question. All right, this is part one. This is Q&A 38 here at the Unlimited YouTube channel. Part 2 will be up later today. Thank you all for the questions. Again, if your question did not get answered, it will in the next Q&A, so tune into that. Thank you. Goodbye.